It's Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, Hot 107.9 at home for the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Of course, you know it's your fault, be high Radio shouted, stepping in the building. I got my West Coast partner in this thing. Yeah. Audio pushes hey, on. Hey, hey. Price, what's good what's with it, good, my brother? dog? What's up with it, man? Just chilling out. I mean, I'm over here feeling good, feeling great myself, man. And I know you yes, got sir. a reason to really be celebrating around this thing, right? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, y'all dropped that album on them. Yeah, man. Um, Stone to- Junction EP. Yeah. Everybody out there, if you haven't listened or peeped that, go check that out, the Stone Junction. It's our first body of work that we've ever put out for sale. People have been looking at us since we was kids, 17 years old, making music. We've never sold a body. So this was the first body of work that we were able to put out for purchase um and it just felt crazy it felt good man we happy tell me about the whole thing the progression from the mixtapes to the album what did y'all do different this time so um with the stone junction it's actually just an ep so it's seven records on there our okay. debut album will actually be dropping later this year okay. we'll, we'll keep y'all posted with that our full length album but mm-hmm. this this ep um really I, we feel like a lot of cats, man, they'll come to Atlanta just to, like, steal the juice. Like, you feel me? Like, people that ain't from the A, they'll come down here, steal the wave, and then, like, go back to wherever they from once it's over. And, like, I more so wanted to come down here for the culture versus the music. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm from Cali, so we got a lot of everything down. It's just gumbo. You got Mexicans, Asians. You got whites. You got everything. Yeah. You know, I went to school with at an 80% Mexican predominant school. You feel me? So it's like out here, everywhere you look, it's... Black people. It's my people everywhere I look, whether it's at a bank, at a McDonald's, doing the lines, doing the real estate. It's all my people. And so for me, I needed to just come experience that and create in this in yep. this energy. And that's what we did with the Stone Junction. We were in Stone Mountain. Okay. And we were locked in with just fans of a couple cats from out here that we liked. Yeah. And we just created, man, our vibe. And it, it turned out dope. I mean, that single serving, man. Oh, yeah, Talk man. Talk to me about it, man. Yeah. Tell me about that thing because it is a banger. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, bro. Yeah. Um, serving. Servant's produced by my homie Ray Real, who's mm-hmm. from the city. He's from the IE. We used to sleep on this dude's floor. Like, uh, he's the cat that actually introduced Hit Boy to Octane, Octane oh. to Hit Boy. So these are like our day ones, you feel me? Yeah. Um, we cooked up with Ray Real, my homegirl B Mac. We just wanted to, like, make an anthem. We big on just anthems that we feel like everybody could relate to, whether you game banging, you go to church, whether you got a job, you sell dope, whether yeah. you sell religion, whatever it is that you're doing, you got to feel like it's you versus the world, regardless yeah. of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And that's why we don't want, we, we dropped the joint serving just to pipe the people up and just turn them up and give them something to, man, whether you getting up for work, going to the gym, like, turn this on. I feel like it's me versus everybody. Oh. Really? You know what I mean? So that's what we had to do. To dig that. But then I seen y'all hooked up with that boy Cap G on that Vominos, man. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah Vominos, stupid. Yeah. Yo, so like Cap, Cap was one of the like, all right, we obviously, we got a lot of different relationships. A lot of cats out here in the A rock with us. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are very selective of who we do records with, man. We got to feel something. Ain't, yeah. We ain't just chasing just because you got the illest beat tag or the illest verse, like whatever right now. Like we chasing who we connect and catch vibes with. And we literally was in the studio with Cap for 30 minutes and cooked up Vominos. You know what Ooh. I mean? With Izzy, the producer, it literally was just organic and just vibes. You know what I mean? He yeah. he a real, like, he a real Southside Atlanta, like, yeah. n- dude, you feel <laughs> me? Like, straight, like, you know what I mean? So he came through with all his boys and shit and, yeah. and all that, you know, and it was just dope. And we just cooked up, man. And that was one of the, um, he made, oh, Jace, too. Him and the homie Jace from 2-9, they were on the only cats from the A that we actually put on the EP and just, mm-hmm. just to keep it us, you know? How did you feel, though, when you dropped this EP and you said, okay, this one is for sale this time, fellas. We yeah. doing this for the money. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, It felt dope, like, selling it. And um, To me, it kind of was like we finally in the league, like mm-hmm. we finally in the game. Because, I mean, in the, in 2016, where you got anyone could put a mixtape out. Like, anyone really could put out music. Anybody really could even sell their music. But what can you, like, the fact that we actually charted, we were in the, like, top 20 of the hip-hop charts on iTunes, um, which was, like, crazy for us. We ain't expecting it to do none of that because we, it, it, like, I'm actually able to talk about it now. So a week and a half or two weeks before we dropped the EP, we had found out that we were getting off of Interscope. So we were being released from Interscope and released from our HSA 7 situation, meaning we were about to be completely independent two weeks before this project is coming out. So we, like, blown away. Like, we, like, the the average person would have been, like, 
distraught, heartbroken, mm-hmm. don't know what they about to do. We was piped, like, yeah. what? We get to own 100% of everything. Finally, like, it's yeah. done. You know what I mean? And so that's what I think felt the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? Knowing that when it did actually come out, it was our management's push, our push, our fans. Our music's just speaking, and it did what it had to do. Yeah. It just set us up for the next step. Now, leaving Interscope, man, I mean, how do you feel like things have changed now being independent and out here hustling? Um, it's, 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 it's different, but for me, well, we've been signed Interscope twice. So we got signed Interscope the first time in 2009 mm-hmm. when we were kids, younger cats. And um, we were signed there for about two years, maybe. I know we got off. We was independent for like a year. I started producing. We had guy like... Joints going viral online, hitting millions of plays, and just going up in our city. Then we ended up getting signed to Hit Boy and Interscope again. And for me, both of those experiences was just learning experiences. You know what I mean? If you're the type of person that goes through trial and error and gets stronger from it, then you build to last. And that's what I believe we are. Mm -hmm. We went through that situation. So now we done learned everything we need to learn about the internal side of the music business. Mm -hmm. And we realize it ain't for us, at least yeah. not right now, at least no time soon. Like, at least until you got seven million, it ain't for me. You feel yeah. me? And so, yeah. because everything, everything that got audio pushed to this point has been us. There's mm-hmm. never been no label to do anything for us. We yeah. just were signed to them, and it was just cool to be like, we signed Interscope. Yeah. No diss to them, but, it, you know what I mean? They just didn't see what we seen. Mm-hmm. And, but they, all, they were very aware that we're stars, and they know that we're going to be huge, so they let us just go. No, oh, no money, none of that weirdo shit. It was just respect of the art, and so I love Interscope for that. <laughs> Shout out yeah. to y'all, cause this cast that can't never get out their contracts. I'm talking about being in their deals for twenty plus years, Ooh. stressing. So you know, what I mean, it just feel good to be out here in the game. It's 2016, and I could drop a song in here with y'all right now. Hey, that's cold. You know what I mean? That's so cold. it feel cool. Nah, I mean, my brother Octane, man, where is he at with it? Octane, uh, yeah. my brother, he in Cali right now. Yeah. Um, he had to shoot back like. Some days ago, we we actually now that we have full control of everything, we open in a store um, for our merchandise because we've been going crazy with the merch. But it's so many different hands in those pots when you yeah. in contracts that it's, it, it makes you very cautious to how you want to do your thing. Mm-hmm. And um, now that it's just us doing what we want to do, we open a, a store for all of our merchandise, our good vibe tribe clothing, our bow clothing. Um, we actually about to just start. We we just bought like a crazy like a whole heat presser for the clothing, the t shirts, all that. Like we going stupid back in the city, so he had to go back and lock in some of that. Yeah, I'm out here still just creating. I've been out here for a little minute, like yeah. two two months, just ducked off. I'm about to bring my son out here in two weeks, and we yeah. gonna just kick it. We here exactly. Yeah, man. I mean, tell me about that southern hospitality, man. I mean, how has yeah. it hit you? And I mean, has it already <laughs> changed your accent? Right, no, look, so I be doing, I'm I'm just ignorant and idiot on my own, so I do my own Atlanta accent that is like, I'm not even going to do because I don't want to offend nobody. <laughs> I just do it with my people from Cali that know I'm stupid, oh, really? but I really, because I love it. Like, yeah. I, people be telling me, like, I got an accent from Cali, but I don't hear it, and I damn sure don't feel it, but I really hear it. Like, you can hear the difference when a nigga from the A, yeah. from NY, Canada, exactly. anywhere, you can hear it. I'm able to. Like, uh, you from the A? Like, I instantly get it, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, But the hospitality is dope, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I believe, like, real recognize real. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it, everywhere I done been out here, I just get received, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not portraying nothing that it ain't. You feel me? I ain't out here moving no type of way that it's not. So everywhere I go, they rocking with me, and I'm always smelling like gas. So they really loving the boy, <laughs> you feel me? You done brought the good vibes to the city, <laughs> you, too. You feel me? So... Everybody let that gas who really you know what I mean and it's just it we be vibing. I, I just I love it out here really. Creative process. I mean getting down here and jamming, I mean, how's yeah. that affected that? Um, really it's just it's just been growing. I've been growing out here, honestly. Yeah. I've been going through a whole life transformation, a musical just transformation. Like yeah. uh, as far as just the message, like you'll probably never hear us make anything like you've heard us make ever again you know what i'm saying like we kind of did that to please ourselves and to please these certain areas and milestones that we wanted to please for ourselves and now that we finally got to sell something in that world like stone junction to me was our take on the music that everyone's making right now yeah but it's not anything to push the culture forward and that's what audio push is about we about making music that's gonna push our people forward musically 
community wise, economically, we just trying to push our people. And so that's what we locking back into and locking into more of the musicianship. Like it's it's musicians out here. It's it's black trumpet players and trombone like play they <laughs> out players, here. You feel yeah. me? They out here. And it's just yeah. it's too many greats out here that I just gotta I gotta kinda just get meshed in and not to even be a star. I just wanna be a fly on the wall. I just yeah. wanna just soak up some game from people that ain't got like some of these Cats out here, they grannies with slaves, like, right around the corner type shit. Like, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm just trying to just learn, get now, more as knowledge. as an artist and a businessman, how do you feel handling the business now, and how have you grown in on that side of the game? Probably, probably more, we probably, I, me personally, I've probably grown more on the music side than any, I mean, on the business side than anything, because it's like we've been forced to, learn the the business you know what i mean when 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 you're dealing with your publishing like we had hits when we was 17 i'm talking about 19 million plays back early when 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 when, when niggas wasn't getting 10 million plays like you know what i'm saying we was cracking them codes early and our money was being played with early you feel me but we kids and i really tripping you had us seven bands we finna take that back to the hood like ah! <laughs> Yeah, you feel me? But yeah. it's more dough out there. So we had to learn that early in the game. We traveled to South Africa, Germany, all over the world. Yeah. Blue money and had to get back to square point A. And But we weren't, we didn't have, like our hustle wasn't going and our drive wasn't going. So it forced us to learn the business mm. because we knew, we knew this is what we wanted to do. We wasn't trying to tap out. So the only thing you can do is get better trial and error. So I locked in. I'm like, okay, what is publishing? What is <laughs> labels? Who's the A and R? Who's the president? Who's the VP? Who actually does what? Period. And like, once I locked in on that and realized I could talk to all y'all crazy, ain't none of y'all running the show unless you make the music. You're not talking about nothing unless you're an artist. You really don't know. Like them, them, them people behind that desk don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you gotta. Once I learned that, how frustrating is it though dealing with people behind the desk that don't have a damn clue? <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, I know that can be very frustrating when yeah. you're trying to put out a project, you're trying to change the game, you're trying mm -hmm. to push the culture forward, and some people are saying, nope, we want, we want that. this. Exactly. That's behind you. Right. That's what we had to deal with a lot. And now that we are in a place, like, we know we're innovators, man. Like, some people, like, I know a lot of people hate that they had to eventually do it, but a lot of these niggas who wear skinny pants who did not want to, <laughs> Blame that on the youngs, period, point blank, because niggas was getting ridiculed in 2008, 2009 for these jeans. Like, yeah. early, and this is just us being ourselves, being who we want to be. We want, we don't want to dress like all y'all. Mm -hmm. So now, now we got to figure out what's the next step in, in, as far as innovating. And we always known we were innovators. So when they would tell us to make, we, we need something like this, we need something at 99. You guys are from California. We need 100 BPM. We need a, sounds that I'm like, yo, I'm not doing that. I start. We started those sounds. We started that vibe. We started that way. Why am I backtracking? And so it was, it was um, a little frustrating. But at the same time, we always used it as fuel. Mm -hmm. You can't do nothing but use it as fuel or let your car break down. So it's like, what you gonna do? And that's all we had to do is use it as fuel. Pipe up, pipe up, pipe up, pipe up, and then we ended up getting off the label. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, I just think the creator. He gets it, and once he sees what's true to you and, and, and your soul is aligning with your lifestyle and, and your blessings is aligning, then what's supposed to happen going to happen. Exactly. And we're free. <laughs> it's got to be how, like, Harry Tubman and all just everybody felt. Like, this got to be how y'all felt, and I get yeah. it. You dig? Being able to travel the world as a young man, I mean, what was that experience like for you? It was crazy. Um, my first time, we went to South Africa in like 2010. Actually, my son was born. I got one son. Yeah. My son was born when I was in South Africa, which was like a super bittersweet moment. Yeah. But I always, I always know and knew that like, like I'm gonna be able to tell him the greater good, and yeah. you know what I'm saying. But being able to travel is kind of just what changed me too. Like I come from gang banging, Cali, that that whole lifestyle. So it's like being able to see different parts of the world and and see see life for really what it is is what turned me down and just like made me start appreciating like we was just across the street looking at the little water shooting up yeah. the little water <laughs> show that shit is awesome like it's just you forget about how dope stuff like that is when you just so lost in yeah just the in the bs of life bills when you lost in all that type of stuff you 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 like lose appreciation for regular shit like water shooting out the <laughs> ground to music like that type of stuff is crazy and so going to africa seeing our like 
seeing little bros and little like little family like that's my family out there so just yeah. seeing them kids like we was really getting chased by like in the car getting chased by a gang of little african kids like on the movie you feel me that's on the crazy. same streets nelson mandela and all them walked on the same streets where they came and killed all them blacks i forgot Ooh. what that uh that it's way tough um no nah, uh the apartheid like when they came and just airing all like them same streets fam we was Ooh. we was on it so it just touched me yeah. you know what i mean and then it made us realize what we wanted to do music for like audio push stands for pray until push stands for pray until something happens right. like it's just so much more in our message than what you know what i mean then vamanos then serving but as much as we love those records and we love those songs we just got it's more to who we are mm -hmm. and so it's time to really lock into that Definitely did that. I mean, going forward, though, Price, what you got on the horizon, brethren? Bro, we cooking. Like, um, um, we, we, like I told you, we, we got the debut, our official album, you know what I mean, that we're, we are blessed to actually put out through ourselves mm -hmm. um, and our management with a crazy just team. And we got crazy stuff in the works. We got a crazy summer tour in the works right now. Um, I've been producing, like, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, we got... Crazy features coming out, just different people's like projects. This dude named Jesse Boykins, who's a crazy like singer. He's like mad. Like, I'm not even gonna go as far as saying he's like the prince of our time because he's not that, but he's like he could be Prince's little nephew, Cook. nephew. He ain't even gonna give me nephew's cousin. He could be Prince's little nephew. Like this nigga's just awesome. He just he's so into who he is, and that's a feature I'm excited about. But honestly, just. Just working and getting more information and learning more about our people so we could help change the bullshit that we in. Hey, you know I what I mean? That. I feel that. How can folks contact you, man? Um, whatever social networks, whatever is backslash audio push. Um, my personal socials is Bow Price B O W P R I C E on Twitter, Instagram. Octane is B O W Octane O K T A N E. Follow him on all social networks, and we just rocking audiopush.com. Blackplanet.com backslash audio push Christian Mingo. We on every site. Hit us up. We here. Audio push, man. What's happening? Hey, yo. I appreciate y'all every time though, man. Cause you you every like our first time meeting you, you just always have the same vibe and energy. Like just welcoming and and and, and supportive, bro. And I thank you. Hey man, if we don't show each other love, who the hell else is <laughs> Straight up, man. Me? Anything y'all need from us, man, audio push. Let us know. We'll come up here performing the damn. Wherever. Let us know, bro. Straight up. Already appreciate you, my dog. Yes, sir. Be high radio shouty. Audio push, man. Let's go. Yeah.